Armory Disc Golfers, welcome back to another video. MVP has blessed us with some new releases. We have the brand new Axiom Pitch and we've got the Crave in Eclipse Plastic for the first time. This is part of their Eclipse Celebration package, which we'll get into. And today we're gonna compare them to see how different they are or aren't to a good old glitch and a Neutron Crave. Nine Holes, Austin Colony Park, let's get into it. Come out of it, that's not gonna come out of it. Hopefully it hits something hard. And now to follow that up and hopefully improve on it, Neutron Crave. Well, I did not improve on it a single bit, <laughs> but it shows a good comparison of flight. And actually, funny enough, this gives a good opportunity to show why I bag a glitch, because I am really bad at patent pendings, but this disc makes them easy. Maybe I should have thrown it before I said that. Coast, push through everything. I actually think that it did. Okay, this is a much more realistic patent pending, to be fair. Buckets? I mean, that wasn't even close. What am I talking about? Well, the newcomers have a chance to pick up a stroke early, unless I can do some fancy stuff here. I don't hate that run. All right, one up for Team Eclipse. So the pitch, as opposed to the glitch, has a negative 0.5 turn, and its profile is slightly more rounded than the glitch. This first run comes in total eclipse plastic, as you can see, also has this sh fancy new art on it. And I'm throwing off from the side of the tee pad. Man, I tell you what, that is a fantastic flight. Very predictable, but wants to hold over on the Anheuser the whole time without like turning and burning. We'll compare it to a glitch. I mean, that's pretty stinking similar. So like I said, the pitch does have that negative 0.5 turn, whereas the glitch is just a zero zero, but it's in Eclipse plastic and the Eclipse glitches were noticeably more stable than the Neutron ones. So I've been curious to see how the pitches would slot in there. And after one, well, technically two throws, they seem pretty much identical. Like I said, these are MVP's like Eclipse package, as in the actual Eclipse that's happening on April 8th, <laughs> commemorated on the pitch itself. This is also the first time the Crave has ever been run in Eclipse Classic. I know a lot of you are curious how that compares to Neutron because typically these are a little bit more stable. I've thrown them one time and it seems to be about the same, but we're gonna get a couple more throws in at it. This is a 550 foot par four. I'm gonna try to hit it a little bit of hyzer and see how much it flips and pans over. Okay, well, I didn't hit it with hyzer but it kicked out great. I threw that one a little too flat, so I'm gonna try to throw this one flat as well to give you a good comparison. I'm just gonna try to throw it farther left so I don't have to get lucky to be in the fairway. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that there's a massive difference in stability between the two, which MVP is known for being pretty consistent. If that was higher, well, actually, if it was higher, it would've just continued to flip over. This will be the last hoodie hole that I play because it is starting to warm up out here. 273, that's kind of a pump for a glitch. I'm gonna go back to the Crave again, put it on Anheuser, just try to hold it over the whole way. I mean, that's probably gassed. That disc just wants to go. I feel like I, I barely threw it. And don't get me wrong, I love that about a Crave. It's not in my bag currently, but it's always duking it out with an S-Line FD for that straight to slightly understable fairway driver slot. You've got to see these fly on a little bit of Anheuser, so I'm gonna hyzer them out, sweep them back into the basket. I'll throw the glitch next to this so you can see them similar distance. This is probably 200, 220 range, something like that. Stop. I'm just, I'm yoked today. I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. I did that intentionally to try to throw them both the same power, even though I knew that was going to be too far. So you could see how they turn and flip or whatever. The glitch was obviously higher, but I feel like, again, a very, very similar flight. Well, this will be another opportunity to show off the patent pending ability of the glitch. Maybe. I mean, not even, Nick, stop calling your shot. It's not going in. There is a, a funky little window over here. Actually funky enough 
to merit me moving the camera. All right, we're back. Oh, it was so close. I knew out of my hand that that sucker was low. Dad gummit. Not counting that. We skipped a hole, I'm not going to explain it. It's a dumb hole, just, it might be an eight hole challenge. This one is 245 feet through a gap that I promise is tighter in person than it even is on camera. And we're gonna go with the glitch pitch off the tee here. And so we're really gonna test the saint ability of these two guys. As well as my line hitting ability. Okay, well, shanked one right, shanked one left. I'm gonna shoot straight with you. I'm having to re-record this right now because my memory card just filled up the first time I tried to do it. What I was saying is, I'm not too bummed that I didn't hit the gap, even though I would have liked to, obviously, because that gives the opportunity, something just hissed at me. I promise it did. Mama didn't raise no sissy, but she didn't raise no fool either. I don't know what that was. I'm throwing over here. This gives an opportunity to show what the glitch and the pitch are really good at, which is this very low effort, just wrist tosses that are too far for a jump putt, but kind of too close for a normal approach shot. It's just like wrist, and whereas like any other disc on the market would fade out or just fall to the ground, they just keep pushing. I mean, that's like incredibly low effort. Again, I can just give wrist where I can't really throw with my arm and just pop it. And the disc just goes. I mean, that's not like the best approach you've ever seen, but when you're a pinched off position like that and you just need to pitch something up there, these discs are great. Ooh, a little low ceiling look. Got me feeling like Simon out here. Dadgummit. Well, I'm not that guy. Also, these are horrible to putt with. I think they're great discs. Please do not putt with these discs. Team Eclipse is back up one, and I've mentioned that these have special stamps. The Eclipse Craves also come in a special stamp. I don't have one with me, but I'll put it up on the screen. You can see they both drop on the same date. This hole is like 200-ish feet. I'm gonna throw it pretty much straight at the basket and hope to just laser in between those trees. I mean, that is the angle that I wanted, just not the line. Beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it. Ah, I thought that was the one. I know I made the Simon Lazat joke, but I really don't know how to do the whole like air bounce thing. I'm not an ultimate player, but what I can try to do is go from a knee and forehand zinger this thing into the chains. I think I did it. No, dad gum, that would have been cool. But horseshoes and hand grenades, much better look here with the glitch. I actually, if you don't like jump putting or step putting or something, I've said these are horrible putting putters, but if you want to give like 50, 60 foot runs without jump putting or step putting or whatever, I actually do think that this is a legitimate option. Okay, I'm gonna go pick that up and redo that because <laughs> that was horrible. All right, take two from wherever it was. Anyway, like I said, Legit legitimate option. Just play catch with the basket. Dude, no way. <laughs> legitimate option. Tell you what though, that was a fun hole of disc golf and pitches and glitches are great for having fun. So if you enjoy doing that while playing disc golf, there's another reason for you. I've made a little bit of a gold tee here. I've backed it up. You can see the tee box up there. 310 feet so we can throw the craves. This Neutron Crave, Fresh Boy, has our custom throwing down the gauntlet stamp. This is our season tour that we do across the state of Texas. So if you're anywhere in the Texas area, check those out, come play with us. I'm gonna hit these on a little bit of hyzer, see how much they go over. These have been less stable than I expect so far. So I'm gonna see how they hold up in around the 300 foot range. Yeah, nice pop up to flat and then just wants to stay there. Mmm. It's tasty. Now the trick is doing it twice in a row so I don't look like an absolute fraud. I'm not gonna lie, that made me pretty nervous saying that about myself. Um, they may not have been the exact same angle, but there might be a tick more stability to the Eclipse one than the Neutron one, just based off that one throw. All right, there's the slightest bit of wind, and 
I legitimately think I have as good or better of a chance at putting this in with a Crave than I do with a Glitch, so. At least as good of a chance. Let's go. Can I get a like from all the Crave putters in the comments? <laughs> Don't blow it up too much. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, the sun is shining, I'm playing disc golf. These are fun discs to throw, so I'm in a good mood. Let's give this one away. Leave me a comment and let me know what the most fun disc is that you have thrown, what disc you enjoy throwing. And uh, we'll, pick a, we'll pick a random comment and send you along an Eclipse pitch. Also, don't forget to visit us, armorydiscgolf.com, on drop day to grab you one of these and a Crave, whatever your heart desires. Little Annie out of the hand, stay clean through the trees, thank you. I mean, it's just so low effort. I brought that one a little farther inside because I didn't want to hit the tree on the second one. So low effort, just easy glide, a joy to throw. I know I just gave that whole thing about putting with a Crave or whatever, but I mean, I feel like if I threw the glitch, I should putt with it or the pitch as the case may be. Man, that feels so hard to do though. I don't know why. I knew it, I psyched myself out on that one. They feel weird to putt, I don't know. Well, as clutch of a putt as it was on hole seven, which was actually the sixth hole that I played for Team Neutron, <laughs> Uh, that was similarly pretty big choke, all things considered. I'm going to throw this last hole, which is a tweener hole, just hard on hyzer just to see how these discs react on that. And then I'll pitch up with the pitch and the glitch. I made the last minute decision not to throw hard, hard. I just wanted to throw it nice and firm. You can trust it on hyzer. It'll pop up to flat, coast, and then come back at the end. That's a fantastic fairway driver. Yo, check this out. Dude's got a battle scar from edge of circle putt. He hit back in 24. I might have thrown that one a little flatter. Again, it has enough stability to come back at the end. It might be in my head. The Eclipse seems a little bit more stable, but if you like Neutron, if you like Eclipse, I think it's really just dealer's choice in terms of like hand feel of the plastic for what you pick there. Ooh, and I have unintentionally actually set myself up in a good spot for a little glitch throw in because of this stump here. I'm gonna have to drag it from left to right, which is great for this kind of disc. I really wanted that to go in, just for the record. Great tree kick. As in, that wasn't my like rating on the line approach to the basket there. For some reason, I feel like I need to get like real low to the ground for shots like this. <laughs> Dang it, if I, had, if I had stood up, it goes in. Well, hey, thanks for joining me for a round of disc golf. This is one of the more enjoyable ones that I've played in quite a while. And I don't think the discs that I'm throwing are coincidental in that. These, like I've said, are an absolute joy to throw. So if you enjoy the glitch, try a pitch. If you enjoy the crave, well, try a crave. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.